Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, talking fishing. If it's facts about fishing that you wanna know, then tune in, folks, cause this is the show. We'll show you all the right bait to use. So sit right back, you got nothing to lose. Doesn't really matter if it's trout or cop, flathead marlin or a gummy shark. Listen to the guys and you can't go wrong. They'll be talking about fishing till the cows come home. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. And welcome everyone to Talking Fishing, a new season. We are back for 2022. And I'll tell you what, welcome Nikki, welcome Adam. Isn't it good to be back? It's great to be here. We're excited to kick off. Things are all happening all around. All things are happening. We've got some good things to talk about in a minute, but we are saddened uh, by some news that only came to us about two hours ago and photos are coming through, messages are coming through that good old Parks Victoria have closed Portsea Pier. Can you believe it's the 4th of October, 2022? We are in the absolute peak of calamari season. Yep. Portsea Pier is the number one pier, I reckon, in Port Phillip Bay for the big ones. Yep. Mm. There are dive businesses located in Portsea and they rely on Portsea Pier to pick up their customers. There are fishing charters that work out of everywhere that rely on Portsea Pier to pick up their customers. And on the 4th of October, Parks Victoria closed Portsea Pier. I tell you what, what a kick in the guts for people that love their fishing and boating and diving. Yeah, it's a baffling one for this time of year as we're right on the, you know, the beginning of snapper season, the whiting are already mm, starting yep. to fire up. Like you said, the calamari season yeah. is well, you know, well and truly in the swing of things. I, no, they, I, they've I nailed think, the timing. I just think Parks Victoria are so disconnected from the rest of the Victorian government from the work that the Victorian Fisheries Authority do, that the work that Better Boating Victoria do, that they can be so disconnected to, to do this. It's just beyond conversation. It's just, anyway, we need to move on. We need to keep it positive. Um, although, I'm not sure about this one. <laughs> <laughs> not La, so positive. La, La Nina can go and get stuff too. Yeah, she's there. <laughs> yeah, that's not I mean, good. we haven't had a day over 21, yeah. have we? No. Nah. No, you know, no, um, been, uh, and we've had about six metres of rain in yeah. <laughs> three Tr days. Trout opening uh, occurred about a month ago and the rivers are all high and dirty. Yeah. You know? But hey, it's, it is great for the environment and Gippsland Lakes has been the beneficiary. Yep. Unbelievable. Uh, mm. Biggest uh, brim spawning on record down in Gippie Lake. So wow. uh, thanks La Nina for that one. Um, oh, tuna around the front. Tuna, oh. it's all tuna. <laughs> <laughs> It, has it stopped? I mean, there's... Um, there's I, don't, I don't reckon it did. I was talking to someone about this the other day. I don't reckon it stopped. No. It just kept going. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, and the barrels. I mean, it's, that, it's not just been... The school incredible. fish were right through summer and, and kept going probably till April, I think. Yep. But then the barrels turn up. Yep. And, they've, and the barrels, like, they've been here for a while. Like, yeah. they've been in here for a good six, eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. And there's still fish being caught now. Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see what happens over the next yeah. you know, week or two as the temperatures start to shift. And yeah. we've heard all sorts of crazy reports from out there. I've heard killer whales. I've heard the whole lot, Dave. It's been unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. Hey, uh, we've got to keep going with the show. Uh, folks, let's have a look at what's been caught by the people at home. It's time for Catch of the Week. Catch of the Week, brought to you by Shimano. Tell you what's been a slow start. Snap season. It's cold. Yeah, <laughs> it's water cold. We're going to talk about water temperature actually later on, but uh, it has been very cold. And of course, La Nina, no, not a day over 21 yet. But have a look at this. Uh, Alex Fernell kicked off her account Oof, uh, off Coronel. That is a cracking wow. snapper, hey? That's a snapper and a half. That is That's a, a real good fish. Half. That's yeah. a ripper. Wow. And we're getting these days now, like the lovely you know, spring days mm. and... Yep. Um, few and far between. I mean, this, although it hasn't been a bad. It hasn't run. been too bad. Hasn't no, been a bad last weekend's been weeks. pretty good. So. Before that, yeah. it was a lot of lot of wind. Uh, another snapper coming from Westerport. Westerport seems to dominate yeah, early, delightful. as always. Stuart Frost, a lovely eighty-five centimetre snapper from Blue Gum Point. That's a new on, one. Yeah, okay. uh, French Island, just up, uh, you know, up, up from Coronel. Yep. So, yep. Okay. Um, another one from Western Port, Maria Constantino. A couple, sorry. From, uh, yeah, from nice. Westerport. They are fantastic. Yeah, but wow. I always say, 
there's one good thing about Snapper season, and that's the white the invite. White. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at Steve Johnson. He's been getting his customers out on the whiting and the Trevally. Thank you very oh, much. Some good nice. Trevally coming. Out. Beautiful sashimi. Love the bloke in the dress there. What the what the hell, Steve? He, he lost a bet. For oh, sure. <laughs> Maybe it's a box. Steve, yeah. uh, he lost a bet. Yeah. Anyway, didn't think he let people on like that. Oh, we're going straight. Uh, we're rolling through the night. Um, Amy Day, have a look at that tortoise oh, head. look at her go. Well done, well done, Amy. Amy, well done, and congratulations on uh, being pregnant too. Um, it's going to be a girl, but have a look at those whiting. I mean, they are quality mm. whiting. And didn't the whiting literally just turn on in the last week? Yeah. yeah. Like literally just started, yeah. and they're, yeah, yeah that's, we're in for another crazy. If anyone can find them, Jerry and Amy can. It's mm. just absolutely good to see. So, I mean, Western Port absolutely dominating, really, in the yeah. in the fishing stakes. And mm. I know a lot of people have been going out uh, in Port Phillip, and, and obviously, I I'm not sure they're targeting snapper as hard as the Western Port anglers, but no. um, I know on the Thursday, the Queen's morning day, mm. uh, Rye, Sorrento were all at capacity, their boat ramps, and it was all about the, wow. the big calamari, calamari and the whiting, you know. So, um, But anyway, let's have a look at Port Phillip Bay now. Anthony Torpy, a lovely 7.4 kilo snapper on Sunday, out off Mornington. I mean, what a great That's way to start the account. Yeah. It's a big fish. That is a fresh looking fish <laughs> too, yeah. isn't it? How good is that? Uh, all right, let's go inland. And when the rivers are running that high, mm. it kind of takes the spotlight off the inland fisheries. But the stonkers have been stocked. There's no doubt about that. Have a look at this one. Steve wow. Pittman, a 70 centimetre stonker rainbow out of Karkarook Lake. You can get these in all your local lakes. We're going to talk about local lakes yep. later mm. on the show and as well. always a good fish when you've got to give it a cuddle for a photo. Yeah, look yeah. at that. Look at that colour too. Yeah. Eildon Pondage is also a place where there's some stonkers, but there's also some browns. Have a look at this. Oh, oh that's a nice 14 brown. 14 pound. <laughs> is that a good looking that's fish? A, yeah. yeah, that's a cracker. It's doing Tell well at, at the hatchery, that's for sure. Yeah. Something about brown It's all trout. the old brood mm. stock, you know, and they, they do well. They put it yeah. in there and Very it makes nice. anglers days or, yep. you know, lifetime events, really. I mean, yeah. Those sort of lifetime. things. So, um, and I tell you what, a very special place. Now, mm. you, you can't go to this place just yet, right? Because the boat ramp's not quite finished, right. nearly yeah. finished. But have a look at this. Bruce Giardini launched off the bank, uh, and oh. I think with his son, and got some, uh, I think they got five for the day Chinook salmon from Lake Bull and Merai. Um, They're an incredible fish. Yeah. Got them all on pilchards. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I think they were bait. using Steve Johnson's sounder between 20 and 40 foot, if you can work that oh, out. Oh, yeah, nice. Metric. Where's Google? Seriously. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, good to see Bull and Mero on fire, and the boat ramp's only a couple of weeks away uh, from being completed. And wow, is it a good look. I, I saw some photos during yeah. the week. Um, all right, let's keep going. Brody Metherill, have a look at this 1.4 kilo brim from the Tambo River. Goes Very up there nice. every school holiday. Yeah, and just, and dad and oh, and he's got it worked. Fantastic. Yeah, he's got it worked out a bit now. He goes yeah. all right, Brody. One point four kilos. That's a, a cracking fish. That's a big brim, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big, big brim. All right. Mm. If you'd like to send in a pick of your catch of the week, this is what you have to do. If you want to be like me and have your photo on TV, email your fishing pics to info at ifish.com.au. Fish on! I wanna go fishing. Plenty of picks coming through. One of the places that um, didn't get a mention that normally does is Lake Tyres. I'm leaving that all till later because, uh, wow. Yeah, too many reports. It's too, wow. too much to get through. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And the other one is next to Bull and Merai is Purrumbeet. And Purrumbeet has been on absolute fire. Yep. Um, not just the, the brown, the rainbows, the... the Cheetahs. Cheetahs and tigers. Oh, yeah, cheetahs and tigers. Um, the red the reddies. Fish. reddies. Yeah, I saw the that. The best reddy season in been amazing. Yeah. So anyway, there's, mm. there's just, we're, sorry, apologies to everyone that sent photos in. We couldn't get them all tonight being the first show. Um, just a, a, We're going to touch on this more next week. We're just, there's so much to get through tonight, Nikki. Yeah. But congratulations to you and the Northcote Preston Angling Club. 100 years old this year. Yeah, it's official. So we've had our big event. So yeah. it's a big celebration and we're, we're so excited. We've unveiled a mural wall and everything. So yeah, awesome. it's all happening down in Preston. 100 years is amazing. And you're the mm. vice president of that club? Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. Still going another round. So yeah, we've got exciting things happening and kids' yep. nights and 
Christmas trees happening. So yeah, yeah. it's all happening. I was um, I was very privileged. I emceed your hundred an anniversary uh, night. You and, did. You and, did a very um, good job. No, a great club though. What a club. I mean, I'd never been to your club, and just so good. But we've got a little bit of um, footage we'll show next week um, on on the on the event, and it was pretty good. Hundred years. Not too many clubs can claim that fame so there you go all right coming up fisheries news including all the details of an illegal haul of 480 brim right here in melbourne that's next on talking fishing talking fishing we know what you'd rather be doing we know what you really got in mind we know you'd rather be out fishing and today's the day you're gonna wet a line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing See you down and tackle world today Talking fishing, talking fishing Nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing Live from the studios of Channel 31 Melbourne, it's now time for some very fishy news. Welcome back to Talking Fishing. First for the season in 2022. Uh, really appreciate the comments on social media too. People watching on our Facebook live stream, even Tiff Newton, uh, part of the team, watching from Byron Bay. G'day, Tiff. Yeah, Tiff. Um, and lots of comments about all the other piers that are shut as well, because it's not just ports. Mm, I mean, yeah. Warn it's been both piers in town are, yep. are now completely shut. Uh, it, it's it's just devastating when this stuff happens, and p parks just seem to just rock up with temporary fencing and knock it into place. And yeah, I'd love and to shut know how they come up. Anyone. Love to know how they come up with it. Yeah. Really. Anyway, let's talk positive. Uh, there's been a lot of trout stocking uh, occurring in the last couple of weeks, particularly for school holidays. Now I know the school holidays are over, but the trout are still there. It's nice and cool, yep. and they're there. Um, Nikki? Yeah, know, we'll hit, read some out and let, off, the, yeah. let the viewers know. So Albert Park Lake's got 1,500 stockings for wow. September, which is amazing. We've got, uh, what else? We've got Lilydale Lake, 1,000. So you could go out to there. Fantry Gallery Quarry, which is a good one, 450. Um, ads, they're, they're all over the place. Oh, yeah, and there's some cracking places here that I've never heard of. St. Augustine's Waterhole. <laughs> it sounds like something popular out of the place. Lion King. Yeah. <laughs> so that, and that got 750 trout. I think trout, it's a so popular that... place for when you're staggering home from the pub at yeah. 3 in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, but it mustn't be small. There's 750 yeah. fish packing them like, and then yep. you've got all the, you know, all the ones you, we've come to expect. Albert Where the hell's Park. Lismore Golf Club Dam? Oh, some golf it's course somewhere. It's probably Lismore. I guess you know, it's, it's got answer. 300, so it's no... Yeah, it can't, yeah, it can't be, it yeah. can't be small. Emerald but Lake, if you want to go up on Puffing Billy, yeah. take your fishing rod. Take the yeah. rod. It's not there. Fairtree <laughs> anyway. Valley Quarry, yes, yeah, heaps. Yeah. Carcarook, as we've seen. Now, if you go to... Sorry, can we put that slide up again? I don't know if the boys can do that, but um, there is there is the website down the bottom, vfa.vic.gov.au forward slash holiday trap, because I'm telling you, the list is about six times that. Yeah. Wow. Um, there are trout stocked everywhere. It's great to see. First year ever that 10 million fish have been stocked in Victorian waters. Great effort. Victorian that's, yeah, authority. that's an amazing so, effort. Great um, effort. Amazing achievement. I'll tell you what, if you can't catch a trout in one of those lakes, there's something wrong. Um, and that's not to talk about how good the rivers are, but they're just running yeah. high and yep. fast. Uh, all right, the next one um, is, uh, um, what's it called? Hooked on, Hooked ballerine. on ballerine. Here we go, yeah. we've got a slide on that too. Um, Hooked on Ballerina is on this Sunday. Recre recreational fishers and lovers of seafood can celebrate Gone Fishing Day, which is this Sunday as well, by joining in the festivities at Port Arlington's Hooked on Ballerina Extravaganza. It runs from 10 to 4. Uh, you can meet Basher Hooley there, sure. um, champion Richmond footballer. There's a free fishing uh, clinic for kids. Now, see the website on the bottom of your screen, Hooked on Ballerina. Get on there because you do have to register yeah. for that. I think they do. It sells out, so get on Does there it? now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you need to book for that. Follow that link or get on uh, the VFA's Facebook page, and you'll see the link in there. Um, mm. Cooking demonstrations, a seafood hub. You're going to meet Dr. Corey Green from the Victorian Fisheries Authority. He is the number one scientist, I reckon. Superstar. Yeah. yeah. On so many species: yep. kingfish, sharks, calamari, cuttlefish. And he's a good trout angler as well. Yeah, he loves it. Yeah, so um, there's a community market featuring local produce, food trucks, and market stalls as well. So there you go. <coughs> Get down there. Now, the Worth Yeah, uh, we're, group, we're down, down there. Down there? I'll be out, down there, so come say hello. And yeah, we'll be 
showing the kids about squid and flathead, whatever we can catch on the Saturday. So awesome. yep. come have a bit of a look and we'll, we'll entertain you. So. Yeah, there you go. Do you know who else is going? <laughs> who? To help out the fishing. Big dog boys. Remember? Oh, oh yeah. Are they? Do you remember, Fantastic, yeah. Uh, what, I was about yep. in December, I think last year, the, um, um, yep. the boys come into the studio. Yes. Mm. Uh, Harry, and Harry and Ben. Yep, launched, and, uh, launched their YouTube channel, doing very well. That's right, yeah. yeah. Yep. So, so oh, they're both awesome. heading to Port Arlington as well to help out with the fishing on the pier. And I'll keep I'll an tell eye. you what, if you can't catch a fish with those two boys around, there's <laughs> something wrong, because they are absolutely yeah, going. They make me sick, some of the fish <laughs> they catch. I'm sure I was yeah. young again, catching <laughs> fish like that. But anyway, it's good. Um, I want to talk about the next one. Really, really interesting, because we were talking about La Nina earlier on, which means lots of rainfall. Um, this, oh, you, know, you know the bloke I'm talking about, I won't mention him, but um, he, he's right into this, right? And, and I said to him, Cole, I said, <laughs> I said, La Nina again, you know, third year running. And, mm. and he goes, yeah, yeah. And, and there's also the negative South Dipole. I'm going, what? <laughs> he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's why you're getting all the westerly winds, because of the negative South Dipole. I go, yeah, or wow. whatever, Cole. Wow. Um, He's right into it. And if yeah. you study all this stuff, mm. that's why we're getting a lot of winds, cold water temperature, cold air temperature. Yep. Um, I'll tell you what. Anyway, let's have a look at the bay temperature, the graph. Uh, this is what it's doing at the moment. So ocean temperature outside, which is the green graph, has, uh, well, sorry, the bay's caught up with the ocean temperature. And we're only just travelling into you know close to 14 degrees yep. it's it's a cold start i mean at least we've turned the corner yeah and it has yeah. jumped quite quickly from well from you look sort at of you look at the last two weeks there. yeah, There's yeah. A bit you of can a really spike. see that's right which is yeah. which is promising that's yeah. why we've yep. seen those snapper show up in catch of the week yeah. and yeah. plenty of other reports and that too. and that spike and that little water temperature um up there it really gets the wide fired difference. up too yep. you know they, they they can be a bit slow during winter but that really gets them fired up yeah. so there you go that's what's happening in water temperature all right, it's always a sad note sometimes to some of the news that we talk about. Have a look at this for a headline. Hundreds of fish illegally caught in the Werribee River. This is just absolutely disgusting. Four people will face court after a night patrol by, the fish, by Melbourne Fisheries officers detected one boat with more than 480 fish aboard and illegal fishing equipment. Fisheries officers were patrolling in the early hours when they observed a boat which had launched from Werribee South allegedly using a trammel net and often operating without a light. When the boat was retrieved at the ramp, the officers intercepted it and allegedly discovered, I don't think there's any allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, 480 brim, seven estuary perch and one flounder. The haul of fish weighed about 180 kilos wow. and was located by officers in two large fish bins throughout the floor of the boat, along with six trammel nets that measured, get this, between 24 and 102 metres long. <laughs> Obviously the officers seized the vehicle, boat, trailer, fish, nets and all fishing equipment. They should take their bloody house as well. If you see, and this is what's so important, yeah. if you see or suspect illegal fishing, call VFA's 24-7 reporting service, 13 fish, 133474, to speak directly to a fisheries officer. You can remain anonymous, Make the call and make a difference. Like, what the? Mm. 480 fish, 180 kilos. Some people are wired differently, Dave. Who thinks that that's okay? Like, who, that's... <laughs> yeah, they take so long to grow to the brim. Yeah, that's, that's right. A, that's tens a big and hit. tens and tens yeah. of years yeah. uh, taken out of the water yeah. just like that. I mean, I just... Beyond comprehension, I tell you. Mm. Um, I'll tell you another good thing. The, the Victorian Fisheries Authority and Better Boating Victoria together have been running forums, public forums. Yeah. You went to the Mitchum one, Yeah, I went along to the Mitchum one, which was a good night. So if you're keen to, to ask a couple of questions here about what's going on, that's, that's where you need to go yeah. to these forums. Yeah, all right, forums. so there's one coming up. Here's uh, the little slide on it. If you missed uh, one of the ones earlier this year, there's one coming up this Thursday at Epping RSL. So. Tip and you can probably have a beer while you're listening. <laughs> Generously hosted by the Epping RSL Angling Club, the night kicks off at 7pm with presentations from Better Boating Victoria and the VFA representatives, including local fisheries officers. You'll also get a chance, a chance to ask anything you like during a question and answer season, uh, session with all presenters. So what are you waiting for? Book yourself in via the link that's on the screen right now, local, uh, forward slash local forums. Lots of 
web links, but you do need to book into these things. And do you reckon anyone's going to ask about Port CP? <laughs> there might be a few questions, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, on or why, that, why most of the piers seem to be closing down one after another. Yeah. Why it has to happen at this time of year. Why does it have to happen this time of year? I mean, is, I know, it, is, like, it, is I know, it winter the time to do it? Yeah, I, I know. Listen, I understand in these sort of situations nothing happens quickly, but surely if they've got it, they don't, surely they don't just wake up one day and go, let's check Portsea Pier. There's a, there's yeah, a plan. It must be a schedule. Yeah. Surely yeah. that plan's yep. got to be in, you know, mm. May, Yeah. not October. Yeah. I just, I'd, I'd love to know how they come mm. up with. A, why did they go there in the first place to check it? Was there an incident? Did someone yeah. lodge a complaint? Was there mm. a little bit of transparency would go a long way, I think, when it comes to these issues because from an outsider looking in, it seems like they're just taking the mickey. Some photos that are just coming through now as we're on air um, from this afternoon, the, the fencing that they've mm. put up is so pathetic, right, that you can actually walk around it on the sides. And there were 10 people on the end of the pier at 5.30 this afternoon. That's, it's just pathetic. Yeah, it's um, I, I, there's no other way to describe it. Pathetic. Uh, that, that this sort of thing can go on and, and um, you, you just... Where, where, like, when's it going to end? What other peers are out there that haven't been maintained because there's no maintenance plan for these things? Yeah. Parks just, just find something wrong with it and shut it. What's the next pier? I mean, I predicted that Portsea Pier was next. I mean, it cops all that wave action because of you know, mm. certain reasons and they need to fix that, which is configuration dredging. Yeah. But what, what's the next pier? You know, is Unf it unfortunately, Frankston, it's, it's Seaford, Morty Alec? It's sad that we have to even ask that question, but it kind of seems inevitable, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is yeah. sad, but hopefully yeah. improving wrong. Anyway, it's going to be um, a talking point of uh, fishing for the next week or so. Coming up, product of the week, and Cara heads into the kitchen. I tell you what, she's cooking up some flathead, I reckon, Adam Ringcourt. We'll talk about that soon. Uh, that's next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Fishing. Welcome back to Talking Fishing and it's been a very, very busy off season for our family at Spotters as they launched the new crypto frames in all of the popular lenses. These are beautiful to that's be new, honest. That's yeah. the new Ignite lens too. Ignite lens, yeah. So you, the ones you can see on screen are, so that's an, an old favourite, but crypto, the frame itself. Mm -hmm. So very modern styling, a little bit more mm. of a narrow sort of, you know, headspace there as you look through. But my favourite part about them, matte black. Yeah, yeah. the matte's nice, it's, isn't it? It looks great and it's so comfortable. It's, mm. it's just, it feels a little bit softer on your head than what mm. the normal gloss frames do. So it's more for those with a narrow, a mm. more narrow sort of face and head, mm. but super trendy. Yeah. Nice. Something you can easily wear Put down the to the pub. little steel screws at the front that look at a bit yeah, of... Yeah, a little bit of old little school. Bit of bling. Yeah, yeah. yeah, a little bit of old <laughs> school. I like it. The old, you know, everything old's coming back. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they are, nice at... they are great. Nikki, yeah, have a look at those. thank you. So, again, and this is probably a direction they've gone in recent times. No longer are they just aimed for fishermen. So now you can buy something mm. you can wear down to the shops. Yeah. You can wear out for a walk, mm. but you can also wear fishing and know that you're getting a 100% the best UV protection possible, premium quality lenses, comfortable frames, and 100 polarized. Mm. Whether you take them into the bay, whether you take them up the river for a trout, yep. you're going to be able to see. There's heaps of different, which we've covered plenty of times in the show previously, there's heaps of different lenses to suit your fishing application. Or if you just want to buy a pair as a casual glass, Dave, you've got the it's a carbon, carbon. Yes, so, which so is basically just a, yep, just a yeah. black. Um, 
carbon now is also a photochromic lens so it's yeah, got the light activated. adjust yeah, it's yeah. they're incredible bits of gear yeah. and the yeah. family grows with the new crypto range which i think is going to be a favorite as we head into christmas and the current fishing season as we uh we start to see a little bit of sunlight and you didn't That's mention it. that these were voted the best fishing sunglasses at the after trade show yeah. this year well i didn't mention that for a reason dave yeah they're so good as expected. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the whole industry. Of, and, and I'll tell you what, it was so good to have the after show on again oh, uh, this yeah, year. It, you know, it, it had been three years. And it's uh, for anyone that hasn't seen the after trade show, it's all the wholesalers in Australia that get together and have a stand. And then all the retailers fly in and uh, all the fishing tackle shops and, and even hmm. you know the BCFs and Anacondas yeah, fly whole in. Industry. And, Yep. Uh, yep. And, and go through and have a look at all the ranges and do buying deals and all that sort of stuff. And they also vote on all the products, all the different categories. And um, the Spotters Crypto won Best Sunglasses. Easily, in a yeah. landslide, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, that's good. Never, ever get caught there, Spotters. Yeah, no, and, so, and definitely, yeah, I've definitely been, heading I've been wearing the Ignite too. lately. Yeah, they look great. They're just mm. a really, really nice lens. Yeah. So, um, remember, now, I haven't done this for a while, but remember that segment we filmed up in um the delatite with the snake yes in the oh, and I, yep I and we didn't pick it until the video <laughs> i know but anyway not many not much talk of snakes around is that's not la nina as well cold, isn't it yeah, yeah it's yeah. too cold yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll be coming up. um there was a photo in catch now this is unusual I, I, we didn't I, I should remind people um send in high resolution pics if you can to catch of the week because we got one it was only about 40 kilobytes of an elephant fish caught in Corio Bay this week. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, OK, that's unusual. Are you sure? Yeah. It's out of season. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you don't, don't hear from to too do. many over that side of the bay. No. Well. They normally no. come from Western Port. No, no, oh, no. no. Elephant no, fish in. caught in Corio Bay this week. Is it hmm. early or late? Yeah. Or lost? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's lost and late. <laughs> but anyway, um, there was a, there's a couple of rivers. I know um, Charlie May, who's uh, ah, yep. a, 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 no stranger to talking fishing. She's been on before many, yep. many years ago, but um, has been fishing the Little Stevenson. And what's the one that runs mm. through the Cathedral Mountain Ranges there? Is it... Uh, it's not okay. the King... Anyway, one, the one that runs through C Cathedral National Park, uh, some beautiful little browns. They're, they're probably mm. a couple of rivers that aren't running as high as, for instance, yeah. the Rubicon or the Goulburn. Yeah. Oh, or the Goulburn's out of control. Mm. They're, they're all running really, really high. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Goulburn, there's potential for it to flood. You know, I think if Eildon gets much higher, yeah. I think Eildon's sitting at 98, 99. The other day I drove, this is how deep it is. I drove over yeah. the Bonnie Doom Bridge, put my hand out the window, I was touching the water. <laughs> uh, <that's laughs> not quite true, but anyway. Uh, all right, now let's head into the kitchen. I want you to Ooh. have a look at the size of the flathead that Kara's looking here because I reckon they had a ring quarter. They're small. Here's Kara in the kitchen. <laughs> The kids have been out fishing and they have come home with a lovely feed of flathead. So we're going to make a really lovely macadamia crumb. We're going to coat our flathead tails and bake it in the oven. To get started, we're going to roast off our macadamias. I've got raw macadamias. I'm just going to keep them whole and pop them into a pan. And we're going to cook them on a relatively high heat just until we start to get that beautiful nutty smell and they turn a little brown. So we're dry roasting these. We don't need to add any oil. The natural oils of the nuts are actually going to be released and that's going to give them that lovely brown colour. We'll just give them a little shake. You can see some of them are starting to toast up. So to make our crumb mix, I've got some beautiful fresh herbs. I'm using some oregano, parsley and fresh thyme. Now we're going to place these into a blender or food processor. And I'm also going to add some zest of a lemon. So probably half a lemon will be enough for this. And we're going to add our macadamias into here as well. And you can see that they've got beautiful colour on them here. They've got a little bit of brown on them. So that nutty flavour is really going to be prominent. I'm going to blitz this for a few seconds. Doesn't, we don't want a fine paste, but we still want a few chunks in there, but enough that we've got a lovely consistency. So our crumb consistency is looking great. So it's beautiful colour with all the greens of those lovely herbs. Smells amazing. Now with the natural oils, that has what's made this relatively moist, which is what's going to allow it to stick to our fish. Okay, so our next step is to drizzle a little vegetable oil into our baking dish that we're using. 
and I'm going to place our flathead fillets in here and we'll give them a really good seasoning with some lovely sea salt flakes. We haven't got any salt in our crumb yet, so we can be quite generous with this. And I'll just toss them through the oil just so they're coated on all sides. And now they're ready to coat. So I'm using a fork. It's a little bit messy here. So we're just gonna take some of our crumb and it is going to mold to itself. So we're just going to place generous amounts on top of our fish here. It's a little bit of a tedious activity. And we're just going to nicely cover the tops. So as they bake, this is going to crisp up and go lovely and golden. It'll be beautiful on top and the fish will still be delicate underneath. So I'll continue with these and then I'll show you the finished product. So our flathead tails have got a beautiful, generous coating of that crumb on top of each of them. We're going to place these into a preheated oven around 200 degrees and they're only going to take about 10 minutes to cook. These little guys have been in for 12 minutes and they are beautiful, golden and crispy. So all that is left to do is to plate up. I've made a really simple side salad here, which I will serve these with. And that is such a super easy, under half an hour meal that you can get on your table. Great for weeknights. And it's going to taste absolutely delicious. And here we have it, our absolutely divine macadamia crusted flathead. Tell you what, if that doesn't get the taste buds going, yeah. I'll go eat. And yeah. there's no way I caught those flatties. I've never <laughs> caught flathead that big. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be yours. <laughs> no, I was only. I've seen. I, I remember a fishing trip where you didn't catch any. Late, late ties, first comp we ever did. I don't think you turned oh. a reel. Comp day, you didn't turn a reel. I don't think. But then I've seen you catch big ones as well. Can't no, you can't that. remember. I can remember it vividly. <laughs> Whenever there's probably one occasion where I've outfished you, and that was it. That's why I remember. That's probably why I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Out. Um, we are going to talk about Lake Ties later on as well because um, lots going on there. It's been an amazing Incredible mm. place. But um, the old flathead, uh, again, been quiet. Um, mm, yeah. I don't, I don't know when. We need Joe Farr back. Joe Farr's been, if you don't know Joe Farr from Joe Farr Fishing Show, he's been in America for about three or four months. I'm not sure he's coming back. <laughs> yes, he's, um, he's, time. It, he's the only man I know that does a charter for Blue Spot. Yeah, uh, yank flathead. But and the only person I've ever met that yeah. knows the specific season yeah. and where to go. Where to, to go depending. To get yeah. Oh like, wow, incredible! Is the knowledge on the man? Unbelievable. Yeah. No, no, oh, there you go. All right, coming up next, Kramer's mailbag, and we take a look at the fish coming out of Lake Tyres. That's next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. Talking fishing, we're talking fishing. All right, bit of mailbag coming in. Uh, let's kick it off with this one. Uh, I think we've got a photo too to go with it. I'm not sure if you're aware, this is from Richard. Mm. Have a look at this. I'm not sure if you're aware of this situation, but it's becoming increasingly frustrating that cars are parking in the boat trailer parking areas at Turidan Boat Ramp. Can we please increase the number of parking officers policing this before it becomes a serious problem? There were very few places to park my trailer on the weekend, which of course is frustrating. It is also a safety hazard because families with young children are wandering uh, to and from their cars whilst people are trying to back trust. I don't know what the hell you do about that. Nikki, can you put on more offices in the morning? <laughs> Maybe. Just before, just before you start your day job. <laughs> um, it's just ignorance from people. They just yeah. need to. Well, does it? This, this is the problem. And, 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 I mean, mm. let, let's let's call it how it is, right? Probably about fifty to seventy days of the year, you need every single one of those car parks. Every other day, it's we probably get away with it. Yeah. Like, what do, you, what do you do about that? Yeah, but again, I think it's, it's got to come down to the common sense of 
the car without a trailer parking in that spot. I mean, yeah. if, if yeah. those people are parking there, they're clearly either residents of Turidon or don't live too far away, enough yeah. to know that it is known for its fishing yeah. you know, capabilities as mm. well as the boat ramp there. So I think it's just a little bit of mm. self-awareness. But there's a situation going on at the moment, it's, it was on the news last night, about the coffee van and also the fish and chip van at the bottom of Oliver's Hill in Frankston. Oh, yeah. And the council have made a decision to not renew their permits. Well, they're set up in a boat trailer car park at mm. Oliver's Hill, Frankston, which has very limited parking anyway. Yeah. Right. You can't go to Mornington because that's chocker block. You've got to go to Paddo and that's usually chocker block. But you know, you know mm. at this time of year, you need every car park. And if 10 people turn up to buy fish and chips, that's 10 car parks that should have a trailer in them. So then if you go and put a, a, a sign up saying no parking during say September to March, then it's blowing 30 knots, there's plenty of car parks. Like there's, yeah. I, I don't know yeah. what the answer is. No, but, it, but, but again, cause, but that's exactly the answer. They're, you can't have a set rule because no. it is so no seasonal. No parking under 10 knots? It just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Bunn said no parking yeah. on this day. No, you just, you, yeah, common sense. I think it's just yeah. common sense. Right. There's clearly yeah. going to be lots of boats around. There's, there's and I know there's some people like in it. But, there's no yeah. common sense when it comes to parking. Sorry about that. All right. Uh, oh, this is one from James sent in uh, yesterday. Uh, G'day, Dave. A, re a revolutionary, this is an interesting one, a revolutionary carp herpes virus was scientifically evaluated for release as a biocontrol for this horrendous pest to our Australian rivers and billabongs. The potential benefits for native fish populations could be enormous. Despite being proven as safe to other species, it was never actually released. Why? What are the risks? There are some community consultation, there was some con con community consultation a few years ago, but there has not been any further discussion in the last few years. Any recreational fishing groups are, sorry, are recreational fishing groups being loud enough about supporting this biocontrol? Can we get an update from the VFA? Good question, Jane. Mm, now, oh, whatever yeah. happened to the carp virus? I think we're I focusing think on another virus. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, all, that, all, the, all the issue is yeah. the virus is going to do its job so well and so efficiently. Yeah. What do you do with so many floating carp? Yep. Because the waste that, is a big because issue. Because that can't yep. be good to leave on riverbanks or... No. So do we have Ruin the manpower the to collect the carp as they die? Mm. What yep. happens if you leave the carp rotting on the bank? Does it affect the quality of the water? Does it then affect any livestock or... Yep. Mm. And it's uncontrolled once released. I mm. think that's another thing they're worried people are going to spread it. So. Yeah. Yeah. But what do you do? I mean, I, I, wouldn't it be great to eradicate carp? Oh, it'd be it, awesome. Yeah. Cassie it, apparently have it done would, it, so... But, yeah. But again, what, mm. what are the flow-on effects? I, I don't know if that's even something you're mm. able to, to study. Mm. I, I Char don't know. Charlie Carp can only take so much carp. They've already said that. that yeah, so. yeah, that's right. Yeah. You just reminded me of something when you said mm. Tassie. Like, yeah. um, and and uh, this is a whole new topic. We're going to talk. Uh, we yeah. probably won't have room for the next couple of weeks. But uh, three days ago, it was closed season for calamari in, in Tasmania. Mm. Yep. Uh, <laughs> they're banning the demersal fishery in uh, Western Australia. Australia. Yeah. They're, they're saying fish for, for, for years, can't fish for snapper in, in South, South Australia, Australia until yeah. January. Um, banning Spanish mackerel fishing in Queensland. Queensland yep, everyone's got uh, something. You know what, there's no bans? Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. Anyway, just want to make that point. A um, little bit of news that came through the desk too today. I know it's not mailbag, but uh, a recent fisheries survey in Port Phillip Bay has recorded the first, third highest abundance of baby snapper since monitoring began 30 years ago. So this wow. year's been a bumper. Yep. Um, coupled with the re record abundance of baby snapper detected back in 2018, the two strong year classes combined should see terrific snapper fishing for the next decade. Two of the bay's best three snapper spawning events in nearly 30 years have occurred in the last four years. So recreational fishers who love snapper uh, have a lot to look forward to. There you go. That's amazing. That yeah, that's news. fantastic. So, there it is. Uh, all right. If you'd like to write into Kramer's Mailbag, this is what you do. Send your mail to Kramer's Mailbag, P.O. Box 734, Patterson Lakes, Victoria, 3197 or email kramer at ifish.com.au Tell you what, combination of bright lights and hay fever, isn't it great on the, <laughs> on the ice? Tonight? I haven't been back in the studio for a few months. Um, I left Lake Tyres out of Catch of the Week before because there were so many photos. And yep. if uh, do yourself a favour, get onto the Lake Tyres fishing page, and we we've grabbed a few photos off there for the next segment. But it, it is just amazing. Let's talk about the fishery before we show the fish. Um, it it opened when was it April? Well, so it opened. 
it opened a couple of times this year. Yeah, a little opening first, then closed. And then a proper then opening a, that yeah, stayed open that for one, months. Yeah. yeah, it would have been open, what, four or five months, I reckon? Probably the biggest flush in yeah. 20 years. Yeah, that's right, because we mm. had a look. Were we, were we on air when we saw, you know, we saw all the water pouring out? Uh, I, yeah, I no, no, we were. All the brown were water? Because yeah. there was that little Yeah, yeah, yeah you could see the creek colour change. Next to it. Yeah. We yeah. talk about it, uh, for those of you who don't know, Adam and I do, uh, Talking Fishing on 3MP, and it's now on the ACE radio network right throughout Victoria through mm, 10 yep. stations. But we talk to Brett Geddes every week and yeah, gives us an update updated. on, on yeah, Gippie. Yeah. But it, it, it's amazing. It had a big opening, biggest opening in, in, um, in 20 years, yep. and it's now closed. Well, it's only closed, what, a few weeks ago. Yep. Um, people are saying it will return that system to its heyday. Just have a look at some of the fish that have come out in the last week or so. Let's have a look at the first one, black brim. I mean, uh, they're saying the brim oh. fishing is sensational. Yep. Uh, Glenn, Nels Glenn Nielsen, um, lovely couple of brim there. Um, so dark too, those ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're right throughout the system. I know I fished it in February. Brim everywhere. And Absolutely, they, and they were down the front at that stage. They were down they? the front, yeah. So, and I think they're still down the front. Yep. Um, there was a thing called Trevally Alley, so that little, <laughs> um, it, and it was quite tidal. But for a while there, there was all these big Trevally, yep. almost giant Trevally, stuck in the thing. Well, have a look. John McCoy got one the other day, forty-six centimeters. That's a fair Trevally. Yeah, that's yeah, nice. A I reckon that's. Pretty close up the front as well. They were incredible scenes, Trevally Alley. People shoulder to shoulder <laughs> casting at these <laughs> Trevally yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I know. Um, I'll tell you what, if that happens again, let's have a look at this Ludric that was caught um, last week. Don't hear of many of these. Oh, no. Wow, look at that thing. They're a cool looking that, fish. Yeah, that young they fellow are. was really cast are. into the snags yep. for, for EPs yep. and bass, I think. And, um, and they go hard as hell, too. <sighs> That's a Imagine good, bring one that's of those. A, that's, a that's, great that's, that's a great looking fish. fish isn't yeah, it? yeah. yeah. Hey. Well done. It's a great photo too. You have to be happy mm. with that. Now, the tailor were big. Yep. When the tailor were in there, they were big. But have a look at the salmon. Emily got this one the other day. Oh. <laughs> Seventy centimeters. Thank you very much. <laughs> if they're awesome. in there, yeah. <laughs> if they're in there, there's not many and, bait fish for a and while. They're locked. <laughs> <laughs> and they're <laughs> locked in there. Oh, they'll be busting wow. up on the surface. And of course, it wouldn't be the same if we didn't have. A big dusky flathead. Yeah. Brett Geddes has been fishing it right through winter, hasn't he? Yep. And every every week on the radio, let's have a look at the. That was oh, an eight centimetre by Brett. That is amazing. That and fish. that that quality and that calibre of fish were also being caught land based, as Brett reported during the radio yeah. in the in our TV off season. Land based, just walking, wow. flicking for flatties and getting Amazing. fish yeah, wow. to that size. Yeah, yeah. All right, coming up next, the all important hot spots, and we're going to take a look at the record breaking barrel tuna that was caught only recently next on Talking Fishing. Talking Fishing. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron is a trailer boat and social club on Port Phillip Bay. The club has a great range of facilities, including multiple boat ramps, ample car and trailer parking, boat wash and fish cleaning, fishing competitions and boat safety lectures, boating activities and club events, a restaurant and two bars. Easy launch and retrieval makes for a relaxing time on the water for you, your family and friends to enjoy. And boating memberships are now available. The Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, the best trailer boat experience on the bay. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. And now the segment you've all been waiting for, Fishing Hotspots. Brought to you by the Bo Morris Motor Yacht Squadron, Melbourne's premier trailer boat club. All right, the segment that everyone listens to and watches. And pen, that because, pen and paper out. Yeah, because yeah, no, these ready. are really accurate spots. <laughs> so like, no, they are. Don't, what are you laughing at? <laughs> you said that like they're just saying they're accurate. <laughs> This is uh, where you need to go. All right, let's kick it off. Now, this place has got a brand new boat ramp that was uh, constructed over winter, and we'll show some highlights of that next week. Uh, Queenscliff, the big calamari on. Mm. 58 boats, um, Taylor counted, Taylor Hunt counted in wow. the Lonsdale Bight on yeah. <laughs> standing Sunday. Room, standing room only. 58 That's amazing. boats. Amazing. Yeah. So, if it's you could find a bit of water to throw a squid jig, yeah. you would have caught one. And they weren't there counting the sea, seagulls, were they? No. <laughs> That's, uh, so, awesome. Get down to Queen's if they're on. Um, thank God we didn't put Portsea Pier up there as a hotspot because they <laughs> had to have taken that down. Scratch that. If you haven't heard the news, uh, Parks Victoria today closed Portsea Pier. So, 
Absolutely devastating news. Um, all right, the next one, if you want to get an early season snap, I would be heading down to Mount Martha, 18 metres of water. That's the next hot spot. Mm. Not too hard to find 18 metres. You don't have to go that far out. No, not from Mount Martha. Um, it's, um... And there was, it was a good fishery last year. I reckon Mount Martha was on fire for most of summer and even into autumn. Yeah, so. it was. And those mm. fish that are coming a bit early will be sitting in the deep waiting for that water to yeah. heat up a little bit. Yeah. Um, many of your club members fish the salt water. I know it's very, you've yeah, got a no, lot of fresh water anglers. We do, more so the bay than anything. Um, yeah. yeah, Port Phillip over Western Port. Do you run any snapper yeah. comps at all? Yep, we do. Yeah. St Kilda, generally yeah. we fish out of. So yeah. yeah, a bit of a mix. Yeah, cool. Hmm. Uh, all right, let's head over to Western Port now. And Tortoise Head Bank has got to be the capital for King George Whiting at the moment, down the southern end of French Island there. Uh, there'll be plenty of boats on the Whiting because, yes. you know, when it is still a bit cool, a lot of people don't get into the snapper season until they... You know, so that sort of 17, 18 degree yeah. mm. mark. But um, certainly the King George Whiting have been on, as we saw from Amy Day in the, in the yeah. uh, Catch the Week segment earlier on. So, And if you're after a snapper in Western Port, there's no other place to go right this time of year is Coronella. That's our next hotspot. So some good fish there. Just uh, pick a bit of deep water. You'll see the boats down there as well. And that's, and that's the one. If you want to get, if you're hell-bent on getting an early snapper, yep. Coronella is the best place to start yeah, by yeah. far like it's not yeah. even close yep all right uh let's head right to the west of the state i think this is the first yeah for hot spots i'm really intrigued by this well place. i've been mm. reading up a bit on this place but the next hot spot is rocklands reservoir now we talked to a young man called gage Wright every Correct. week on 3mp yep and Travis Dowling always uh, talks about this, and, and a cheerio to Travis's mum who's watching Marilyn too from Euroa. <laughs> uh, she Shout she out. loves the show. G'day, Marilyn. Um, but Travis has been building this fishery, and he kind of says it's it's about three or four degrees warmer than Lake Eildon, so it's always oh, ahead of okay. Lake Eildon, yep. it, and it's got way more timber. And you know the VFA have put a lot of per a lot of golden perch in a lot yep. of. Uh, Murray cod. I think mm. they're looking at a million Murray cod there. Wow. That will be the fishery in Victoria yeah, it's when the, it's yeah. done, when, yeah. it's, yep. when it settles and it's had its stocking. Yep. A bit like yep. Yielden was, you know, it's probably Yielden 10 years ago. Yeah, but, it's yep. the one to watch um, for sure. They'll probably grow quicker and, you know, I reckon five, six years, it'll be the place, place to go. The place to go, yeah. yeah. Rockland's out okay. in Hush. Well, it's go. a bit of a drive, but I tell you what, if you haven't been Worth there, it. go there. Uh, and very last um, is, of course, Lake Tyres on the brim. If you want to get your brim fix, uh, I reckon it'd be pretty much guaranteed to get a brim in Lake Tyres. Yeah, it's been fishing exceptionally been really, really good. Uh, there you go. All right, now, for people that didn't see it, um, big news. I mean, the barrel tuna was big oh, news for the last yeah. few months anyway, but yep. uh, there was an amazing story, and we're going to have a, sh uh, have a little, little bit of a clip that made uh, it made all the news, actually. It made all the news. It made um, the rumour file on 3RW. It made The Age, The Herald Sun, everything. So let's have a quick look at this. Karam teenager Ryan Gazzola reeled in a whopper more than double his own weight. 135.4 kilos. I was like, what the, like, this is just unbelievable. Like, Off the Mornington Peninsula on Saturday, the 17 year old wrangled with the southern bluefin tuna for around four hours before it surrendered. Move! We got him! <laughs> but this tale has another hook. CSIRO scientists also wanted a piece of this special fish. Unfortunately, they asked for the head. I was like, oh, the head's kind of in a bin at Hastings. I don't think we can get that. The tuna head was retrieved from the bin, revealing it was tagged by scientists way back in 1993 off the coast of WA when it was 52 centimetres in length. When recaptured, it had more than trebled in size to nearly two metres. No other tagged fish has been recaptured in Australia after such a long period of time. Anybody that gets to catch a fish of that size at, um, at that age is, is a very lucky boat. Being a true fisherman, Ryan and his mates are enjoying dining out on his big catch. So what does 29-year-old tuna taste like? Unbelievable. Emily Rice, Nine News. Yeah, if that's not an amazing story, I'll go there. That's, that is, that's, that's amazing. Uh, a fish that was tagged 29 years ago yeah. and to actually have that tag still in the fish captured yep. and, and reported like that is yep. as amazing, absolutely amazing. So, 
What a growth rate. It's, a, it's incredible oh. to see. And if you release them, you know, safely, they're, they're going to live on. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Lots, lots being caught. And I know uh, there was a little bit of criticism on social media about that. But it, uh, if it wasn't caught and kept, then you wouldn't know about that tag and, yeah. and the science behind it. But uh, the, the, the fishery has recovered it to a remarkable mm. uh, position. And, yeah, well, um, yeah it's there's, a there's a quota. There's a quota for wreck fishers and there's a quota for commercial yep, fishers. Bag and limit. So everyone's well everyone's within. Everyone's doing so, what they're doing. Yep. Um, nothing to worry about here, but um, it, it's an amazing story. And even as Ryan said, you know, mm. like the head was in the bin at Hastings boat ramp, and and then the the CSIRO said we need the head, <laughs> and the, the bin was about to be empty, and they were able to get the head <laughs> out of the bin. So um, yeah, you were talking about big fish yesterday, too. Yeah, so they're on Sunday. Sunday. So yeah, nudging 160 kilos. It was just wow. under 159 kilos. Um, Tomo, you know who you are. Great fish, mate. Um, yeah. Like unbelievable. Like when we got bluefin to 160 kilos mm. on our doorstep, that's the fishery's headed in the right. Wonder way. if yeah. we ever hit 200 kilos. Well, it could happen. If, if you said yeah. 150, yeah. like even three years ago, if you said 150 yeah. they were all kilos, 100, like, ah. 110, weren't they? You know? yeah. But now that's yeah, that's mm. nudging it. So yeah, uh, don't forget we do talk fishing on 3MP every week, and um, you can catch us Saturday mornings or on the podcast. Just get the 3MP app and. Like I said, also uh, on the ACE radio network right throughout yeah, Victoria right now through Victoria. 10 stations. So whether you're in uh, Swan Hill or Orbost, you'll be able to hear us. And, um, and it's a little bit different than this show. It's, uh, yeah, it is. It's all fishing reports and Based charter operators and, and, and yep. some really good stuff. So make sure you catch that on a Saturday morning if you want. Uh, all right, Nikki, ads, thanks for first show back. Yeah, we are back. back. Yep. And uh, there you go. That's it for Talking Fishing. We hope you enjoyed the show, our first for the new season. Next week, the minister is in the house. We have a new fishing and boating minister, Sonia Kilkenny, and she joins us in the studio next week. Until we see you again next Tuesday on Talking Fishing, please stay safe on the water and enjoy your fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing, we're talking fishing. We got all you need, just take a look. Watch those fish jump on your hook. So just relax and take your time. Enjoy the show, then drop us a line. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing, talking fishing, nothing but fishing. We're talking fishing. Talking fishing. Have a good weekend, Mr. Walker. You too, son.